In this uh, short video, I just want to talk briefly about the course syllabus and let you guys uh, know a little bit more information on the uh, evaluation scheme for the course. Uh, so if you just scroll down in your course syllabus, uh, there's a couple of, you know, you should read through this and make sure you don't have any questions uh, or information uh, that's provided here. but uh, little things are in here, so I do give extensions on assignments if it's needed, and you can request uh, one free extension uh, of up to one week. And if you don't hand in a paper uh, without any documented reason, like for example a doctor's note, there's going to be a deduction of 2% per day. Um, some other ones, uh, you have to submit all major writing assignments and pass the final exam to pass the class. So this uh, might sound, you know, a little intimidating, but it just means basically that you have to hand in uh, all four essays and, you know, show up and write the final exam. Um, those are kind of the basic necessities to pass the class. Um, if you didn't, if you had, you know, a missing assignment and you had a legitimate reason why you missed it, uh, I would, you know, be flexible and, and uh, work with you on getting that assignment completed before the end of term, uh, given that you would have maybe a doctor's note or some explanation of why it was missing. Um, other than that, uh, let's take a look at this evaluation scheme. Um, so there's a description, there's going to be a description of each writing assignment in detail on the course homepage uh, and there's a more brief explanation of the assignments in the syllabus, but uh, I'll have a more complete uh, description on the course homepage. So just in this early stage, I just want you to note the breakdown of uh, the assignments in terms of their, how much they're worth and uh, the dates that they're due on. So there's four written assignments in total. Uh, the first one's due on January 27th. I have them all due on Sundays um, and I'll show you on the course homepage how to submit a paper. Uh, you do it through the course homepage and there's a little application that's on the course homepage where you just log in and it allows you just to uh, upload a file. And uh, the first one is going to be a literary essay on either Tim Timothy Finley's novel The Wars or uh, a selection of the poetry that I talk about in our week one lectures. Uh, so you have some options in your essays. I always give an option so maybe you didn't get a chance to read Timothy Finley's The Wars and those papers do so you could always you know pick one of the poems that we discussed instead and catch up on your reading uh, later. So there's always a little bit of flexibility be built into these assignments. Uh, that one's going to be a short paper so 500 to 750 words that's around two to three pages. Again look at your style sheet for the English department it tells you all the specifics of you know 12 point font double spacing, adding page numbers in the right hand margin, uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, before you hand in your paper just make sure you look at the English uh, department style sheet just to give you a sense of uh, formatting for academic papers in the university. Uh, so that one's only worth 10%. The second one is uh, a literary essay on either Chang Ray Lee's A Gesture Life or Art Spiegelman's Mouse graphic novels. Um, so you can again pick one or the other to focus on in this paper and I'll give you some suggested topics. You're going to pick one of those suggested topics and write your paper uh, that's going to be due February 24th. And this one's slightly longer, so three to four pages, 750 words to 1,000 words, and it's worth a little bit more, so 15%. Uh, writing assignment number three is a little different. It's going to be a film analysis of Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket, which we'll talk about in course lectures. 
Um, so it's a film analysis and I'll give you a little bit more specific information about how to analyze a film on the course homepage. Uh, but uh, you could also choose a different war film if you have one that you um, are more interested in writing about. I know there's, you know, everybody has maybe, you know, a film that they've watched more recently that they want to write about, like American Sniper or a war film that's, um, you know, fresh in their minds. So I think uh, I picked Full Metal Jacket for the one to include in this class, but I know there are others that could definitely fit into the themes that we talk about in the course. So uh, if you are going to pick uh, one film of your own choosing to analyze, I would um, strongly like you to get my permission. Just check with me that it's okay and that it's a suitable film uh, for you to complete this assignment. And that one is again three to four pages, 15% due March 10th. And then the last writing assignment is going to be due near the end of class, Sunday, April 7th. And it's the longer kind of capstone research paper uh, or longer paper. And it's worth 20%. And that one, uh, you have to write a longer essay uh, comparing two or more of the course texts that we have studied throughout the course. So it's more of a comparison essay uh, where you could compare a short story or a poem to one of the novels or, you know, look at Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket and compare it to Art Spiegelman's Mouse and find some similarities in common there. Um, so comparative essays are a little different. So we'll talk about that as well in our course uh, lectures about how to um, clarify and narrow down your topic. And then the other uh, evaluation uh, that we're going to do is the discussion forums. And these are weekly, actually they're not weekly, they're per unit. There's one or two discussion forums that you have to uh, enter your response to. And I'll explain more about that um, in my post about the course homepage. But uh, just for now, if you look at the syllabus, the discussion forum is explained here. And it just tells you that a discussion forum is an online uh, discussion between everybody in class. So your response is viewable to everybody else in the course. They can read what you say and they can also reply to your uh, posting. And um, for every discussion forum, so there'll be a discussion forum on the wars, our uh, unit one text, uh, there'll be multiple questions or study questions or prompts that I give you and you can answer one of those in your discussion forum posting. Um, so I'm looking for you to reflect on the readings and topics of lectures in your response and give a well thought out uh, response to one of those study questions. Uh, you could also ask questions to your classmates and try to sort of create a dialogue um, and, you know, engage with each other as if you were talking in the classroom in small groups. Um, so there's this, the discussion forum does kind of take the place of, of in-class uh, discussions because we're not meeting face-to-face. -face. It's sort of uh, an online way uh, to engage with each other. Um, but again, you can um, make sure that you are respectful of your peers in the class. You want to be sort of positive and um, not contrary. You want to sort of uh, reinforce uh, a positive environment uh, when you're engaging with uh, discussion with your classmates. And here's the rubric for the forum posting. So this is how I'm going to evaluate your, your responses in the discussion. So have you answered the question or prompt in a well-developed paragraph? Um, so yeah, again, you'll pick the question or prompt uh, that's listed in the discussion forum or somewhere in the lecture uh, lectures and you'll write a paragraph that you'll post in the discussion forum 
And then you'll also have a chance to reply to uh, another classmate's posting. Um, so I'm looking for a well-developed paragraph, which means sort of basically five to seven sentences um, with Hopefully it'll have some supporting evidence so you're not just, you know, pulling ideas out of your head, you're actually supporting it with textual evidence. Uh, grammar and spelling does count, so you want to sort of proofread your answer if possible. And are you engaging with your peers in a reply? So make sure you do a response and a reply. And then how in-depth of your analysis or how close of a reading is your response? Um, so if you have any questions about discussion forums, um, that's something that you can, you know, practice in the first week of classes by adding to the introductory forum. So that's one of the things I'll just talk about in my course homepage uh, lecture, uh, where I'm just telling you uh, how to add to the forum. Um, but make sure you're comfortable uh, adding a posting into the introductory forum, and then you'll get used to the, the formatting of the the discussion forums for every other unit. Um, yeah, so there's other information here about plagiarism, policies, uh, and academic accommodations. Um, I'll let you guys read those on your own time. And then there's a breakdown, our weekly schedule. So these are where the discussion forums are due. So you're not your first one's not due till the 27th. And there's two for this uh, unit where I'm asking you to add a discussion forum post for each of those texts. So one can be on a gesture life, one can be on mouse. And the discussion forum will tell you which one is which. And then uh, just a little bit of uh, final exam info here. Usually I make my final exams open book which means that you can bring in uh, hard copies of the course textbooks. Uh, you can't bring in printouts of the lecture notes or anything like that, but uh, you can bring in act the actual books themselves that you've read or printed out copies of any short stories or poems that we've studied over the course. Uh, and then there's usually four second sections, key terms, kind of a matching or fill in the blank. Uh, some short answer questions that are based usually either on the discussion forum questions or prompts. Uh, sometimes there's a long answer question and you have options and then a formal essay where I also ask you to add evidence. So that's why it's open book. And then at the end of your syllabus, there's some key terms uh, that I thought would be useful for you to know. Uh, the first ones are just related to the study of literature and particularly the texts that we've uh, are selected for this course. And then the other ones are more sort of gender-based analysis or specific to the military masculinity that we're talking about. So I would recommend, you know, having a um, an ongoing list of maybe definitions of these key terms that you can refer to because these are terms that allow you to engage uh, with the discourse of English and with our specific subject area which is military masculinity in a sort of um, sophisticated way. And then at the very end we have uh, an example of a rubric that I would use for all your written assignments and it just breaks down uh, how your mark for individual essays uh, is calculated. Uh, so I look at your thesis statements and your introductory paragraphs, uh, whether you have an outline of your main points, whether there's a clear argument. Uh, then I look at development, so how is your paper developing its argument over the course of your body paragraphs? Are you able to integrate quotations properly? Are there secondary sources that are used correctly? Are you adding enough commentary to explain your ideas or are you just plopping in 
uh, quotations without any explanation of how they relate to your thesis. Uh, organization, again, paragraph development, uh, transitions between paragraphs, strong intros and strong conclusions. All those things are the structure of an essay that I'll be looking for. Uh, grammar and mechanics uh, is another area. So doing the, the grammar um, lessons, again, it's, it's optional part of the course, but I strongly recommend that if you have problems with your grammar and mechanics, that you practice these uh, on your own time uh, while we do the course. So I'm going to take marks off if I see comma splices, if you're misusing apostrophes, if you're not writing incomplete sentences. Um, so these are some things that, that I've linked to on the course homepage through grammar reviews. Uh, so it's kind of up to you to, to complete those grammar reviews and, and uh, ask questions if you want um, suggestions for other uh, grammar exercises or a grammar handbook that you want to look for. Um, but it, again, it's sort of up to you to uh, work on some of these issues if you know that you have uh, problems in any grammar areas. And then the last one is audience style and tone, or audience tone and style. And so this one just looks at, you know, whether your writing itself is clear, whether you um, are using language appropriately for the audience uh, who's expected to read your paper. Uh, you know, using first person in academic writing is sort of frowned upon especially for an analysis or literary paper. So things like that, uh, it would be, you know, a good idea to sort of look through the rubric for this class, look at the English style sheet on the uh, Department of English homepage, uh, and give yourself a clear idea of what's expected of you at this level and um, in an English class. And if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to email me. Um, and if you have any questions about the syllabus or about the, uh, how assignments are evaluated, feel free to get a hold of me uh, by my email.